What side looks more difficult or complex? Or? They're, they're pretty close, so it doesn't matter. I feel that if you circle the one that has more stuff happening, it's easier to simplify. I always feel like the smaller part, it's like you're adding things to it to make it grow to be this other one. So, what could you do here? I one plus c is cotangent squared is the same as cosecant squared. Cotangent squared would be the same as cosecant squared minus one. Because you're doing the one plus cotangent squared identity, and you're taking the one to the other side, so it's minus one. <laughs> I could try conjugate. I could also try factoring the numerator. Oh, I cannot cross off the ones. I see that a lot. Because this, this is, if you want to cross off that negative one with this one down here, you have to understand that this is one plus cosecant. So when you go and you cross off the negative ones, this cosecant squared would be like, hey, I was being divided by one, now I'm not anymore. So remember, you can only, only things that are being multiplied can be crossed off. Things that are being added or subtracted cannot be crossed off. So what I did is I factored the top. It's a, what's called the difference of squares. Cosecant minus 1, cosecant plus 1 are the two factors. This is a little bit different in that when you look at cosecant plus 1 on top, remember addition is a commutative property. So these are really the same two factors. So I can get rid of this whole thing with this whole thing. Now, if you're sitting there saying, well, if you're not multiplying the bottom, if you need me to put that in parentheses and say one times all of that, now I am. So, I mean, I can't cross off the ones back at this first step, but I can cross off the whole factor on top with the whole term, everything on the bottom. So what we're left with is cosecant of theta minus 1. Oh, cosecant of theta minus 1. But I'm supposed to get to 1 minus sine over sine. So we're close. What's another way to write cosecant? 1 over sine. What's another way to write 1? What? Sine squared plus squared. No. Minus cosine. No. No. 1. Sine over sine. Sine over sine. The reason why I'm doing that is I want that common denominator right away. So why not just call 1 sine over sine, right? Now you have a common denominator. So when you go to add them together, 1 minus sine on the top, sine on the bottom, which is what we're trying to get to. So if I start on the right-hand side, there are, diff there are a lot of different ways you guys can think about this problem. So does anybody have an idea of what they would do? No. Uh, so you would do 1 over tangent of t times 1 over secant of t, is that what you're saying? One over cotangent. You would go like yeah, one over one over cotangent. Yeah, then one over cosine. One over cosine. 
Can't. Because on this one, if you turn around and multiply, it's 1 times, uh, you know, cotangent of t over 1 times cosine of t over 1, which is just cotangent of t times cosine of t, which is what I was looking for. In blue, what happens in blue? Which way so what I did is I split the bottom into its two factors, and I split the top into its two factors. We're still multiplying. But what's 1 over tangent? Cotangent of t times what's 1 over secant? Cosine of t. So again, there are different ways. Over here, if you would have circled the left-hand side, you know, circled the left-hand side right here, Somebody might have written 1 over tangent times 1 over secant. And then when you multiply them together, you get right there. So, I mean, 